Welcome to Strong and Balanced. My name is Pat Agostino. I'm a physical therapist here with PeopleFit. If you've never type of, taken this type of class before, we always ask you to consult your physician or physical therapist first. Uh, for today's class, you will just need yourself. Um, if you have a mini resistance band you'd like to use at the end of class, uh, we most certainly can. And if you have a tennis ball or any type of ball or some rolled up socks, if you do not have a ball and you need one, please just stop at the front desk at PeopleFit and we will get you a ball. Um, so with that, let's begin. We're going to do a short warm up. Feet are going to be about hips width apart. Knees are soft. Let's pull your head right up off your shoulders. And we're going to do some neck circles in one direction. Hope everyone had a very nice weekend. Excellent. And let's reverse the circle. Perfect. Keeping those knees soft and belly button in, we're going to do some arm circles in one direction. And with your chest out, shoulders down, let's reverse that circle. Bothers you to circle up top, you can circle down a little bit lower. Excellent. And we're going to march in place, driving your knees upward. <clears throat> well, I did my yard work yesterday. Yes, my first day of yard work. I did all of these warm ups, and I am not sore today, which is great. Excellent. Feet a little bit wider, knees are soft, bottom is up, and let's rotate side to side. Excellent. Now we're going to take your hands and we're going to come back and forth. And if you want to warm up your lower body, we're going to pull your arms back and step back at a diagonal. Step back at a diagonal. And remember, you're not really pushing off that back foot. You're pulling yourself up with this glute in the front leg. Okay, so that's really pulling you up. Great. In eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. Let's come back up to standing. Feet are about uh, hips width apart. Knees are soft. Let's come up onto your toes and back on your heels. And remember, you can always skip any of these exercises that might bother you. I know there's someone in class that this sets off their plantar fasciitis. Although I think she said it was better when she grips with her toes, which is a better way to strengthening those little toe muscles underneath the feet. So I was moving around some plants yesterday. I had this big, beautiful hydrangea in my backyard, and it typically produces about one bloom a year. So I moved it to the front yard. If not, it might be it for that hydrangea. In five, four, Three, two, and one. Excellent. Feet together, hand out to the side. Let's shift your weight over to that right side. And with the left leg, let's kick it out to the side. Good. If this is super easy to kick your foot out, maybe you just bring it out a little bit and do a small circle behind you, if that makes sense. Okay. Try to work this muscle back in here. Or just kick out and return for five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. Let's shift on to the other side. Remember, soften this knee. And we're going to just kick the leg out to the side. Or kick a little bit behind in a small circle. I'm not 
overarching the back, belly buttons in. We're making this a core exercise. We're trying to keep this hip in. A lot to think about. Good. In eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Plus, you have to think about my bloom issue that I have going on. So, you know, you guys have a full plate. Let's turn your left toe slightly in and a nice long step forward with the right foot to stretch out your calf, please. If you do it with a little bit of a posterior pelvic tilt, that's when you pull your belly button in and your hips come underneath you, you may feel a little stretch in this back hip or maybe in the back calf. This can always be done at a kitchen countertop or against a wall um, if you feel more secure that way. <clears throat> In 10 more seconds in this position, please. Fantastic, let's come on back up. You have a foot straight or toe slightly in on that back foot. Nice long step forward. And you're gonna bend that knee, shoulders are back, but more importantly, no arch in that back. Let's hold it there for a good 20 more seconds, please. In five, four, three, two, and one, let's come on back up and let's shake out those legs. Uh, if you have a ball or a tennis ball, even a rolled up pair of socks, something along that line, you can do the majority of these exercises, uh, but you don't necessarily need it. You can do a pretend ball. So what we're gonna start off with is one of your four balance positions. You can start off with feet together. Next, more difficult position, heel to the inside of your opposite foot's big toe. One foot in front of the other or one foot up off the ground. And as a warm up, we're going to soften those knees and we're going to just start to circle that ball around the back. The important part of these exercises is, is that you stay on your feet at all times. What does that mean? That means that if your ball goes falling down, you do not go diving for it. Even though I think we're in the middle of spring training, I'm not sure I have not been following. In five, or maybe we haven't started yet. Three, two, and one. Excellent. Let's switch feet and switch hands, and let's reverse the direction. See if you remember which way you were circling before. And if you lose your balance, stop, catch your balance, bend those knees, and then restart. Excellent. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's switch feet. And remember, stay short this whole time. And we're just going to start with the ball in your right hand. We're going to just toss it up and catch it. Toss and catch. Good. Excellent. In five, four, three, two, and one. Let's reverse feet. Hands in, ball into the left hand, and the same thing. We're looking for a little bit of movement in at the ankles and the hip. But not so much that you're having to step very often. In five, four, three, two, and one. Let's switch feet and switch hands. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to do a ball toss. And when you toss the ball, your hands are not going to cross the midline. So we're going to do a true flick of the wrist up in the air, catch it, stay soft in those knees. 
Let the hips move to catch yourself. More hip movement, the better. Good. And five, four, three, two, one. If you do not have a ball or your flooring is not great, let's switch feet and do the same exact exercise. But if you do have a ball, we're just going to bounce and catch off the floor. Bounce and catch. Great. And five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. All right. Let's drop that ball onto the floor. Um, and if you're not using a ball, maybe just pick out a spot that's on your floor. I want you standing about six to eight inches away from your ball. And let's just work on some shifting side to side. Knees are slightly bent. And I want you to be uh, nice and stiff like a big oak tree, okay? Not the one that came down on my house last year, but another oak tree. Any other oak tree but that one. Good. And now let's reach out all the way over to the right. Good. And while you have your hand over to the right, you're going to gently tap the ball without stepping on it and then back down. Tap that ball and back down. Okay, so we're, it's like you're stepping on an egg. You step on it, you're going to roll your ankle. If this is super easy, then what I want you to do is roll that ball three times in one direction and then roll it three times in the other direction. Excellent. All right, let's shift back onto the other side. If you notice this leg feels like it's doing a little bit of work and that's exactly what we want, let's shift our weight onto the other side, soften this knee. And again, we're going to tap in return, tap and return on that ball. Again, if it's super easy, maybe we try three little circles, right? And maybe we'll reverse that circle for three, two, and one. Excellent. All right. Uh, let's get rid of that ball for right now. I shall. Place it in a super secret location where my dog cannot find it. And we're going to start to walk a tightrope. So if you have three or four feet of space, uh, that's about what you'll need. It doesn't matter the direction that you're going in. Uh, for most of you starting off with your heel to the inside of your opposite foot's big toe, uh, that, that should be sufficient. Uh, you can do it along a wall or a countertop. But that's all we're going to do is we're going to take a slow step forward. And if you say, oh, this is super easy, then go one foot directly in front of the other and step forward again. And step forward. And step forward. Okay. Now we're going to step backwards. So you're going to bring that foot behind. Good. Behind. Step back. And step back. If you're doing a ton of movement, I want you to shorten yourself down, grip the ground with your feet, and let's go forward again. Forward. 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 And forward. And to make your job easier going backwards, shift your weight onto the back foot, then circle the leg around. Shift your weight onto your back foot. Circle the leg around. Step back. Step back. And step back. If this is super easy for you, we're going to add some head turns to this activity. If it is not easy, just continue doing what you're doing. But what we'll do is you're going to step forward, look at your toe, and look at the ceiling. Keep your head up at that ceiling. Step forward, look at your toe and ceiling, you're bird watching. Step forward, toe and ceiling, step forward, toe and ceiling, one more, step forward, toe and ceiling. Great. Keep your eyes on the ceiling. As you step back, 
same thing. Toe, concealing, step on back, toe, concealing, step back, toe, concealing, one more, toe, and ceiling. We're going to go one more time, if you can bear it. And this time, we're going to turn your head right and left, or you can just continue to step forward and back. So let's step forward, turn your head right, turn your head all the way left. Good. Window shopping. Step forward, head right, head left. Step forward, right, and left. Step forward, right, and left. Okay, same thing on the way back. Step on back, right, and left. Step backward, right, and left. Step back, right, and left. One more. Step backwards. Right and left. All right, excellent. Uh, we're going to stretch out your lower back, your hamstrings, um, the things that we've been working. And to do that, if you have osteoporosis or lower back problems, is hold a wall or a countertop, bring your foot forward, and gently lean forward. If you notice, I have a little arch that I'm maintaining in my back. That protects my back, and you should feel the stretch up in here. If you do not have either of those issues, then I'm going to have you gently bend your knees and forward fold into a stretch, allowing your body to hang down. And again, this allows the back to round a little bit, uh, but you should not be working through any back pain. If you get any back pain, I want you to bend your knees and stand on back up. Nice, easy breath. So as you breathe in, your body will naturally rise. As you breathe out, your body will naturally fall. If you're stretching one leg, I ask you to kindly stretch the other. And three more breaths, please. Good. Last breath. Breathe in. Bend your knees. Come up to a standing position. And now I want you to march in place. Pump your arms and breathe at the same time. Breathe, breathe, breathe. We don't want anyone passing out, if, especially if you feel a little bit lightheaded when you stand back up or if your blood pressure meds. Just want to give yourself an opportunity to get all the blood back where it belongs. Okay, if you need a quick sip of water, please grab it. Otherwise, we are going to get onto the floor or into bed for the next set of exercises. Again, if you have a mini resistance band, no, I don't get any money from Synergy, but this is the band I, that I just happened to buy. Um, you can use any resistance band. We're going to get right onto the floor on your back, please. All right, so if everyone can start on their backs for me, please, that would be fantastic. And we're gonna try one of two things. Um, if you have, again, lower back problems or osteoporosis, we're gonna do some pelvic tilts. So feet are, are on the floor, knees are bent. You're gonna gently push your lower back flat into the floor. Your legs should be nice and relaxed. Okay. If you do not have those problems with your back, then I'm going to have you place your hands behind your head just to support your head, not to pull on your neck. And we're going to do some cycling with your lower legs. So bring your legs up and we're going to just start to do a little bit of cycling. Now, remember, you want to keep your lower back pressed the whole time. And the further away from your body you're cycling, the more likely your back is to arch. We do not want your back to arch. 
You just gently pulling it, pushing, pulling in your abs, and you're just doing a little bit of a cycling motion. Okay. And again, you don't need the support for your head. That's fine. If you want a little bit of support, then you put your hands behind your head. If you're doing your pelvic tilts, it's for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, and relax. One, two, three, four, five, and relax. If at any point your back starts to arch, tell me your abs are getting tired, I want you to stop. Now let's try one more pelvic tilt. For five, four, three, two, one. Excellent, let's bring those feet back down to the ground. Let's bring your feet all the way together. Your arms are gonna be out to the side. Keeping your shoulders down, we're gonna gently bring your knees from one side to the other. My belly button is in for this because I wanna make sure that I'm supporting my lower back. But the goal is to get a little stretch on your opposite lower back from where your knees are going. So knees are going right, you should feel a little stretch in your left lower back and vice versa. In five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. If you have a mini resistance band, could you please put it on just above your knees? Again, you do not need it. Okay. So now I want your feet and hips width apart. If you have a band, you're gonna stretch the band ever so slightly. Everyone's gonna pull their belly button in, doing a pelvic tilt where you push your lower back flat. And then if you don't have any back issues, you're gonna do a bridge coming up and holding. And then come on back down. Or just pelvic tilt, come on back up. Good. This is super easy. Come on back down. You can try lifting your toes up off the ground and pushing up again. Remember, we're not overarching the back. You're not trying to do that. Your belly button is in to protect your lower back from overarching. And come on back down or pelvic tilt. We have two more. Come on up. And down, last one, up, and back down. Let's roll right onto your side, please. And you're gonna flex your hips and your knees, and we're gonna be in a clamshell position. I like to keep my hand on my hip so I can open and close the knees just in this position. Excellent. And your hand is there just to make sure that your hip isn't rolling forward and back. If your hip's rolling forward and back, you're doing this exercise with the wrong muscle groups. And we really want to focus on these fan-shaped muscles in your glutes that are extremely important for balance for five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stay in the same exact position, except you're going to push your hip down away from you. And while you're doing that, you're going to raise the whole leg up and down. It's called a fire hydrant because you're just like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant. The thrust of this exercise is bringing the knees apart. But you're trying to land knee to knee and foot to foot while keeping your pelvis down away from your ear by pushing the top of your hip down. For five, four, three, two, one. Now, hopefully, you'll start to feel it back in here. We're going to do one more variation by straightening your legs out in line with your body. You're going to roll your hip forward just a little bit and extend your top leg back. And you're extending it back till your top toe is touching your bottom heel. Again, hand back on the pelvis, and let's come up and down. And if we do all those steps right, hopefully you're gonna to start to feel it back in here. You don't have to overdo it, especially if you've had a hip replaced. But let's do this for 10, nine, eight, seven, 
six, five, four, three, two, one. Yes, you guys are rock stars. Very nice work. Let's go on to the other side. And we're going to do the same set of exercises. Knees and hips are slightly flexed. Hands on your pelvis. And let's start with your clamshell, opening and closing. If it's super easy, you can always roll your hip forward just an inch, and you'll notice that you can't quite open the knee up as much, and you'll get a little bit more resistance that way, with or without the band, for five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. Let's push your hip down away from your body, and we're going to do your fire hydrant, raising the whole leg up and down. Whole leg up and down for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Nice job. Let's straighten your legs out in line with your body. Roll your hips slightly forward. Extend your top leg back. And let's raise and lower that leg. Remember, you're trying to land toe to heel if possible for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Very nice work. Let's come right onto your back and let's remove the band. The band of torture shall be removed. Excellent. Do not have a replaced hip. Then we're going to extend the right leg out. You're going to grab behind the left knee and pull it up towards your chest. If that does not bother your knees and you don't have knee issues, you can grab on top of the knee to gently pull that knee towards your chest with the other leg straight. Let's hold it there. Excellent. And let's switch to the other side, please. And gently pull that knee up towards your chest. And let's go soles of your feet together. Let the knees drop out to the side. If you don't feel much of a stretch in your groin muscles, place the palms of your hands on your thighs, gently pushing the knees down so you feel a nice, gentle stretch in those adductors. And if you typically do any stretches on the floor in bed, it's a great opportunity to do them. And I thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Take care.